Well, in thinking about medicine, one of the big problems is its enormous complexity. And when I began my career 45 years ago at Caltech, I was very much reminded by the analogy of the elephant and six blind men, each feeling a different part of the elephant and declaring the elephant was a spear, a sword, uh, a stump, when in fact the elephant was all of those things and much more. And it was evident from that analogy that really what we needed was a way of thinking about the complexity of disease. And in time, systems biology began to be that way of thinking about disease. But at the same time, it was also evident if you wanted to understand the elephant as a complex object, that is, disease as a complex object, you had to develop new technologies and new strategies for being able to explore uh, different dimensions and different uh, areas of the elephant. And over the intervening next uh, 20 or 30 years, this concept of systems biology really evolved to the place where in 2000, I started the first Institute of Systems Biology. And the idea there was to develop this whole concept of system science and apply it to biology uh, and to disease. And in the course of applying it to disease, uh, a, a discipline which we called systems medicine, we began to realize that in, again, thinking back to the analogy of the elephant, we needed really two dimensions uh, to, to be able to solve the problems of complexity. So one dimension was the idea that we wanted to create for each individual human being dense and dynamic data clouds, dense with billions of data point, dynamical meaning that we made uh, multiple measurements uh, over every three month or four month period of time. And this generated a cloud of literally billions of data points. And the idea of course was to be able to take those data to integrate them and analyze them, and eventually to come up for each individual with actionable possibilities that could either improve their wellness and or let them avoid disease. So that was one big aspect of systems medicine. A second big aspect was the idea that biological networks are the informational circuits of humans and other living organisms that actually mediate development, uh, physiologic responses, aging, and if they become disease perturbed, they cause disease. And of course, an exciting idea was if we could determine how a disease perturbed network differed from its normal counterpart, that could give us deep insights both into mechanisms of disease and as well it suggested new approaches to getting biomarkers for early diagnosis and it suggested new targets for drug therapies for early cures. And of course this all came to maturation in about 2004 or 5 and we began to realize more than that medicine was much more than just these tools and strategies we'd been thinking about, it also required uh, a, an approach to healthcare that was predictive, preventive, personalized, and participatory, and we call it this 4P medicine. And, and the real question then was, again, hearkening back to the elephant analogy, how are we going to develop the strategies and technologies that would truly elevate this vision of medicine to a place where we could actually think about uh, intercalating it into the healthcare system? And it was in 2007 when I met the Minister of Finance at the state of Luxembourg who decided to transform the economy of his country 90% dependent on financial services by bringing in healthcare and biotech. And he asked ISB to write a proposal to help them do so. And we did. And we 
uh, transformed a number of aspects of Luxembourg with regard to creating a Center for Systems Biomedicine and, and uh, a series of collaborations. But what they gave us was about $100 million over a five-year period to invent the tools and strategies of systems medicine. And we did that. And these tools and strategies then placed us at about 2012-13 in a position where we could really, for the first time, think about going to the healthcare system with these new insights of systems medicine and of P4 medicine. And of course, by that time, P4 medicine and our vision of it had expanded considerably because the convergence of the systems medicine I've described, because of the convergence of all the digital measurements that were becoming popular, the Apple watches and the like, because of big data and its analytic powers, and finally because of social networks. And what was really interesting about this new mature P4 medicine is how much it differed from contemporary medicine. It was proactive and not reactive. It was all about individuals rather than about populations of individuals. It was all about wellness as well as disease and not just about disease. It was about creating the dense, dynamic, personalized data clouds. And it was about using these dense, dynamic, personalized data clouds in large numbers of individuals to actually take a new approach to identifying drugs that could be effective in dealing with major diseases. And of course, the social networks were really key for uh, bringing to the patient these concepts of P4 medicine, for uh, allowing uh, people to network together for uh, crowdsourcing, learning new ways to improve their health and so forth. And finally, the, the, the networks are going to be important for patients in the end, I think, are go, going to be those that will really drive the revolution in healthcare by demanding they get the kind of care they know they, they should be getting. So in 2014, we proposed the first formal uh, intersection with the healthcare system by setting up an experiment to examine about a hundred individuals and create for each these dense dynamic data clouds and from them be able to get actionable possibilities to improve wellness and or avoid disease. And in fact an important part of this study was the emergence of coaches which brought to each individual both an explanation of what the actionable possibility was all about and at the same time put that actionable possibility in the context of each individual's own health objectives. And we were able to convince individuals to comply with more than 70% of the actionable possibilities. So the experiment was an enormous success. People realized for the first time, if given the information, they would be able to determine their own health. They realized that your genes aren't your destiny, but rather in most cases, if you can change lifestyle or other things, you can avoid the limitations of your genes. And I think almost all of them felt that this experience over a period of 10 or 11 months was transforming in their lives and most of them then went on to uh, the next version of this whole program, which was on the one hand to create a company called Aerovale that was focused on scientific wellness. And Aerovale had the ability then to recruit consumers into this program. And in fact, in a six or seven month period, it's recruited now way more than a thousand consumers, almost 10 times as many as in our original experiment. And essentially, we're carrying out the same kinds of creation of these dense dynamic data clouds to uh, improve their wellness. And on the other hand, ISB is using this same strategy 
in conjunction with the Providence Health and Services System, a, a, a hospital unit with which we've recently affiliated to actually apply this strategy of dense, dynamic, personalized data clouds to looking at different issues of disease within the system. So we'll be looking at cancer patient survivors using this strategy. We'll be studying Alzheimer's using this kind of strategy. And we're studying a particularly dangerous form of cancer called glioblastoma, brain cancer, using the same kind of strategy coupled with many other strategies. And we hope to actually make it a uh, chronic disease rather than a fatal disease within a five-year period and perhaps even cure it within a 10 to 15-year period. So this is the revolutionary promise of systems and of P4 medicine. And I think what's been uniquely transforming for ISB was the merger that we just initiated on uh, March 9th with the Providence Healthcare System that brings us together in perfect alignment, taking the powerful tools and strategies and technologies and directing them in the context of this healthcare system against major diseases.